actually saying that if the UPP wins the next general elections, that it will migrate. I want to tell you, it will be a travesty, Madam Speaker, if the people of this country make the mistake and vote for the, the UPP again. Major, major mistake, Madam Speaker. And I will just close here today by cautioning the people of this country not to be fooled by the UPP. This particular measure here, the personal income tax, is yet another initiative to dupe the people of this country. Because at the end of the day, Madam Speaker, if indeed they had intended to transfer any savings from this particular initiative to the people of this country, it would have been reflected in the estimates. The reality is, this initiative yielded $55 million last year, and this year, Madam Speaker, it is intended to yield $55 million again. So no, or perhaps little, savings, Madam Speaker, certainly no more than $5 million. So this is just an initiative for them to brag about and to say that they have reduced the bans, they have broadened the bans, and that they're going to reduce the burden. It is not so. The burden will be reduced when the Antigua Labour Party is returned to power, and when we do away or repeal the personal income tax in its entirety and reduce government expenditure, all the wasteful expenditure, the ministerial travel up and down the globe, Madam Speaker, investigative fees, and that's the most vexing one. How can the UPP government justify spending up to $8 million a year on investigative fees when people in this country are starving? How can they justify that, Madam Speaker, when there are so many communities with substandard housing? I want to say again, I want to repeat again, Madam Speaker, that that is criminal. It is misbehavior in public office. And let me say this, Madam Speaker, I know that they believe that they'll be able to incriminate members of the anti Labour Party. But there's a saying, when you dig a hole for somebody, dig one for yourself. Because trust me, Madam Speaker, Mark my words. Mark my words, Madam Speaker. Several members on the other side will end up in jail after the next general elections. No doubt about it. But Madam Speaker, that's not personal, just generally members. Never say who. They know who they are. But yes, I want to say, you know, Madam you're Speaker. Still, you're still maligning the members of this House. Well, that's plural. It's not specific. You're maligning all the members of this House. No, I'm not. I didn't say all. I don't accept that. But anyway, I'm moving right along, Madam Speaker. The point I'm making here is that the country's scarce resources are being wasted on non-value-added expenses. Governments are elected to create value for the people, and the UPP has failed and failed miserably in that regard. They use all sorts of little programs, like the school meals program, the school uniform program, to make it look as they're doing well, but it's only $13 million. They speak about paying back pay. Madam Speaker, every single year, there was always an element of back pay in the budget. I recall in 2003, we paid $10 million in back pay. They're making it sound as though back pay is some new, you know, phenomena. I was in government in 2003. I'm telling you, I'm speaking with specificity and with authority that in 2003, we spent $10 million in back pay. And Madam Speaker, when we win the next general elections, we will have to pay back pay payments that should have been made by the UPP. It's nothing new. So for them to come and say, oh, well, the wage bill increased by $150 million because we have to pay $28 million in back pay. Give me a break. Absolute nonsense. What has happened, Madam Speaker, is that they have literally employed more people at higher rates. And let me give an example. Colin Derrick's system, Madam Speaker, in the Ministry of Finance, making $20,000 a month. That's a fact. I don't care if it's a fact or not. I prefer not to call people's names in here, but these right, people Speaker, have no right of reply. No problem. I can say this on the radio, and I will say so on the radio too. The point is, that individual, Madam Speaker, is making $20,000 a month. That individual, I said. Let, let, let us not repeat. Let's anyway. move on. And if I'm lying, Madam Speaker, the member there for Rural East can stand up and say how much that individual is making. More than the PS, okay, making more money than the PS, Madam Speaker, making more money than the Financial Secretary, making um, more money than the Minister too, 
and many others, Madam Speaker, in the public sector who are more deserving. And that is just a typical example. There are many more. Consultancy fees, Madam Speaker, when we're in government, uh, consultancy fees stood at $3 million. Today, Madam Speaker, the UPP is spending over $30 million a year in consultancy fees, creating jobs for the boys. And that is why I can stand here and say to the nation that we will reduce these excesses, the, these non-value added expenses by at least $55 million when we win the next general elections. I couldn't go line by line. I spoke about investigative fees, $8 million last year. We'll spend zilch. That's a saving there of $8 million right there. Miscellaneous fees, they have it about $16 million. Miscellaneous, in Madam Speaker. In, they're insignificant expenses. Miscellaneous expenses are in excess of $16 million. Even food and beverage, Madam Speaker, the line item for that projected for 2009 has actually quadrupled because all these parties and so on have all around the place entertaining. We knew how to conserve. And I want to say that the Antigua Labour Party on a value-added basis achieved far more for the people of this country with the $400 million they had. And that was the highest level of revenue, $420 million. The Antigua Labour Party has achieved a greater level of value added than the UPP has with twice the amount of revenues. And that is why we can say in any forum that we are more competent than the members on the other side. And when you look at their failed programs, Madam Speaker, you can stand again in any forum and say that the UPP government is an incompetent government, a failed experiment, Madam Speaker, and that the people of this country needs a government or need a government with the type of competence and experience to preside over the advancement. So once again, let me just conclude by stating that the Antigua Labour Party is philosophically opposed to personal income tax, that when we win the next general elections, we will repeal the personal income tax in its entirety and we will fund it by reducing all the wastage in government. Having said that, Madam Speaker, we are not impressed by this particular provision to tweak the bans, which is obviously to get votes. I want to say to the members on the other side, it will not work. The people of this country will get real benefits. We will put $50 million back into the pockets of the ordinary citizens of this country, thereby stimulating the economy by eliminating the personal income tax in its entirety. I thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Thank you, sir. Acknowledge Honorable Member for St. John's release. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I rise to make my contribution to the Personal Income Tax Amendment Act 2009. Madam Speaker, let me first express my disappointment on the fact that this bill did not even appear on the order paper and obviously the bill itself is extremely vacuous it doesn't even have an explanatory note and I really think Madam Speaker that this is extremely bad work poor work very shabby work coming out of the Ministry of Legal Affairs and certainly from the Minister of Finance one would have expected that um, there would have been an explanatory um, memorandum and that too even the, in the movers presentation that he would have indicated to this honorable house the type of savings the adjustment in these bands would have created for taxpayers in this country so I just want to flag that as a disappointment let me also state here to Madam Speaker that the <clears throat> Antigua Labour Party is philosophically opposed to personal income tax as you're aware the Antigua Labour Party ran this country for 28 years without personal income tax. And we did so successfully. In fact, it is true that towards the end of our last term in office that we had certain financial constraints, which were due to the fact that the rate of taxation to GDP did not quite keep a pace with the expansion of the economy. 
And obviously at that time, the rhetoric in the society was such that the Antigua Labour Party was wasting public resources, and I felt that the members so concerned, my colleagues then, were gun-shy to increase taxes. The UPP came on board in 2000.